Answer my question! The question, jerk! Good morning, Joe Patrick. Sad news today. Oh? Yeah. You didn't hear? Little Richard. Oh, yeah. The yeah. king of rock and roll. Sad. The father of rock and roll. The wop baba loo that put the bam boom in rock and roll. <laughs> That's something, something yeah, like that. That sucks. Today's show goes up to Little Richard. It's awful. You know, 87, yeah. though. He had a good life. Little Richard did all right. I, quite frankly, I thought he was already dead. Oh, wow. No, he was around. He still looked pretty good, too, last time I saw him. But we're not here to talk about Little Richard. We're here to talk about the answer of the week. We posted a question. What was this question? I don't even remember. Reset this shit. <laughs> Uh, this week's question came from Joe Benkis, a.k.a. the Casual Comics Guy via the THN forums. Uh, he says, he asks, what's your favorite time a real life person appeared in one of your favorite fictional comics? Barack Obama on the cover of Spider-Man, Muhammad Ali punching the crap out of Superman. Who is your favorite actual flesh and blood personality who appeared in the pages of a comical book? All right. Well, let's get straight into it. It looks like uh, our boy Brian Domingos was first. Jumped right on it. Dingo Dango. Dingo Dango. <laughs> All right, Brian Domingos, take it away. Hey, nerds. Uh, it's Brian Domingos uh, calling in with an answer for the question of the week um, about real people in actual comics. Um, and I know a lot of the ideas are... Um, you know, Dr. Doom meets the cast of Welcome Back, Cotter, or something like that. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, but um, I think it's interesting when you see a real person woven into the, the fabric of the, the story and, and, you know, making things rather than it being a stunt, like kind of being part of the whole thing. Um, and I was trying to go through and, and find one of those good ones. And I love the appearance of Oscar Wilde in... Uh, Starman number six. Oh, I forgot um, it's the first about time that. past uh, Sheed <laughs> kind of answer. origin um, story, where it's showing what his life was like in, in Opal City back in the 1880s, and you get to see Oscar Wilde and and his, um, you know, kind of his his silly and and um, kind of his goofy persona, but he's so funny and and wry, and and I think it fits really well with the Shade in general. Um, and so I, I like to read those issues, you know, often um, and seeing what they had to offer to kind of kind of where that character came from and what he ended up turning into. Um, and so that is my pick. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I got a shipment of comics. Uh, they were DC Comics this week, which was kind of cool. Um, and um, there's more coming. And um, I'm loving the reading you guys are doing of the old material because it's endless and it's um, fun to hear these different snapshots of what comics were like at different periods over the last couple of decades. Um, and the comparisons have been really cool. Um, and so I hope you do more of it. Um, and also looking forward to new stuff too. Um, reading things I've never read before is always fun. Um, great. Talk to you guys later. Leave it to James Robinson to put Oscar Wilde in a comic book. God, what a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Look how smart I am. I'm James Robinson. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absinthe. Top hats. No, that's such a great answer. That's a fantastic I, answer. I forgot all about that. And of course, Oscar yeah, Wilde I'm, lived I'm in Star City. I'm ashamed I didn't think of it. Why wouldn't he live in Star City? Of course, in the 1880s. Opal City. But yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I think Opal he was City. just visiting. He was because he, he was friends with the shade. I think he was just visiting. Oh, of course, he was friends with the shade. They're into weird sex stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It real, it got, <laughs> things were real kinky. And Brian's right. Uh, reviewing all this old stuff has been fun. I would argue it's not endless, but it is boundless. I'll say that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's. I think we'll die of old age before we run out of old <laughs> comics to read. Possibly. <laughs> all right, JD, got a catch called next. Hey guys, it's JD. Got a catch. Uh, Sorry about the last call. Uh, Casey was right. I was out walking the dog, and there's this giant <laughs> fucking hill on the other side of the lake, and uh, I'm just not in as much shape as I used to be. But uh, it's good to hear the call, and glad you guys are back with something resembling cover to cover. So, all right, answer the week time. I've got a couple answers. Uh, first, I want to give my wife's answer. Uh, I asked her this question because she's, she's nerd adjacent, and uh, she pointed out John Wayne in Preacher. 
And I think that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a really good um, one. I also wanted to point out John Lennon in Invisible. There's that scene when King Mob goes into the tantric trance and meets up with a saint, saint-like version of John Lennon. Yeah. But being the caretaker of the Marvel Lake House, I got to go with the Marvel answer. So I'm going to go with Wolverine number 35, I think it is, with guest starring Wolverine, well, with Wolverine guest starring Puck and Lady Deathstrike and Ernest Hemingway in <laughs> Gateway sends him back in time to the Spanish Civil War and what? Puck gets his size back and they start hanging around, hanging out with Ernesto and I don't know. I just, I remember that book fondly and it was actually one of my first introductions to Ernest Hemingway. So yeah, so that's my answer. Wolverine number 35. Uh, but hope you guys are doing well and I'll talk to you later. I have no memory of that whatsoever. <laughs> no, I've never read that issue. Uh, JD. I have to dude, own it. I've got to own it. Please just park your butt in a chair for two minutes when you call. Yeah, I know. Just sit down, relax. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You're in the gym. You're wailing on like, your packs. That's cool. If, if you're if you're walking it, if you're walking your dog, you know, take us take a pause by a tree or a hydrant. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just a quick break. <laughs> Talk to the boys. You know. <laughs> okay, Ryan Mount. He called in next. This is Ryan Mount, aka Hebrews on the Twitter, calling in for the answer of the week. Uh, real quick, the Taika Waititi Star Wars movie. I think the obvious answer is Tag and Bank. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I don't know if they should have that much involvement uh, like the books did. So maybe something similar, though. And my answer to the actual question of the week uh, was what real life character do I uh, enjoy in comics? And a silly answer um, is going to be Richard Nixon. Anytime he's on a cover or in a story, I tend to pick it up. Um, I was a a poli sci foreign policy nerd um so i read a lot about him uh not saying one thing about his politics or anything but uh if he's in a story usually there is something clever that goes in it so that's my answer thanks talk to you next week i remember he showed up in the fantastic four like back in the day um i don't remember i don't remember yeah. uh he was wasn't he still no R ronald reagan was still president in dark knight returns yeah definitely um, uh, man. no, it was Watchmen in Watchmen. He was still president. Yeah. He was still the president and like president for life then. Yeah. They had like eliminated term limits. Yeah. So like it uh, wasn't, and he wasn't even really in it. He was there. Like there were speeches. They talked about, they him talked about him. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, like they would mention his name in the, like the news. Uh, I choose to believe that, uh, Bill Hader and Adam Pally's, uh, bumbling stormtroopers from the Mandalorian were Tag and Bink. <laughs> uh, well, Tag and Bink were officers, though. They weren't stormtroopers. Oh, no. They were all kinds of things, man. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I guess they were like, kind of I was looking at covers the other day. They yeah. dressed as stormtroopers. They dressed as officers. They did all kinds of dumb shit with uh, them. They were in the Rebellion for a minute. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, Rick Nick Dickie Nixon showed up in Fantastic Four Volume 1, 104. That was the first time Magneto came and took over the United States. And Richard Nixon was like, you Fantastic Four, you guys are a bunch of losers. You failed me and you failed your nation. <laughs> wow. I don't think Jack Kirby liked Nixon a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. It was not Bill Hader. It was Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. And Adam Pally. That's right. Um, yeah. But yeah, like they could have been Tag and Bink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's, like, that's my head cannon. Everybody goes like straight to a funny place with Taika Waititi, and I get that. But like he also does like really serious kind of endearing stuff too you know like he can do both and well, I, I mean even even his serious and endearing stuff has humor in it well sure i just don't know that i want like a, a wacky star wars movie man <laughs> yeah fart noise in space you know <laughs> sure but i mean like his episodes of the mandalorian weren't like that they had mm -hmm. they had jokes they had like the stuff with the stormtroopers that was funny but yeah, it wasn't the that was funny it, it wasn't the whole theme of the episode. No, 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 no. And it didn't last long enough to be annoying either. It's just like this yeah. thing, and it played on the old joke, stormtroopers can't shoot straight, and it was funny. All and right. They punched Baby Yoda, those assholes. Well, had it coming, you know. Jason Sachs, you're up next. 
Hi guys, it's Jason Staff calling from my house because where the hell else would I be but in my house? <laughs> Uh, so I'm calling about cameos. I got three choices. I'm going to run them down. I know I'm being greedy, but Jason. you know, okay. So what? Uh, number three, Steven Tyler and Aerosmith oh, guest star in the issue of Shadow Man from 1994 <laughs> oh, or so. God. It's, um, so, uh, long story short, Steven Tyler's body is possessed by a, uh, kind of groupy asshole crazy man who's possessed by Master Dark. Um, they've, the issue features a amazing battle between Steven Tyler and our hero Shadow Man. They look like they should be on a stage together, and I guess they kind of are. Yeah. The stage of a Valiant comic from uh, 94 or so. Number two. Um, Real quickly, the- Steven Tyler dies in that comic book, too. <laughs> I'm, looking, well, you know. I'm looking at the cover. Uh, this also had a serial number contest with winning numbers posted inside. So they were really going for it in Shadow Man at the time. And Shadow Man is on the cover definitely looks like he is in Aerosmith with a mask on, basically. <laughs> like, it totally works. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised knowing what a big fan I am of Steve Gerber's work. Um, Kiss in Howard the Duck number 12 and 13 from 1978. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a crazy, crazy story. I mean, Excuse me. So Howard the Duck ran for president in 1976. Um, he lost the election because of a doctored photograph. He went crazy, was sent to an asylum. In, in the asylum, he was like literally wearing a straitjacket, you know, uh, met a bunch of crazy people there. It's kind of a very strange setup of um, one floor with a cuckoo's nest. Um, so... Long story short, he meets a girl named Window Wester, not Linda Lester, but Window Wester. Anyway, um, and Winda conjures up these uh, demons, these creatures from her imagination. And who are they but Kiss? Like the band Kiss. Yeah, man. Like, there they are. They appear, and um, they talk to Howard out of the ether. In fact, um, the cat man um, actually speaks to Howard. And I love this line. He says, um, the word, when you meet reality head on, kiss it smack in the face. That's the word. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> Wise words from that cat man. Is that Peter Chris? Yeah, Peter Chris. Um, but number one, greatest cameo ever. The most bizarre comic I've ever read. My favorite comic. Like, I just love this comic so fucking much. Don Rickles in a yep. Superman style. Oh, Jimmy boy. Olsen. 138, 139 through 141, excuse me, from 1972. So this is the Jack Kirby era of Jimmy Olsen. It's freaking psychotronic. It's amazing. It's, you know, it's New God stuff. We all know how fantastic this material is. So two issues in a row, who guest stars in and has, like, cover appearances? But Don Rickles. The famous insult comedian who worked Vegas and other famous places in the 1970s. Well, that was it. We lost him. Okay. Uh, yeah, he did mention on Facebook that he got cut off. But, uh, yeah, we got the gist of it. Uh, I'm looking at that cover right now. Uh, I'm, at, I'm looking at the cover of 141 right now, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. Yes. And it's got Superman on the left and the Guardian on the right. And they are holding a giant round black and white photograph of Don Rickles <laughs> <laughs> and they're rushing towards the reader. It's, it's bizarre. And is this the one where Don Rickles like pretended to be a superhero and Superman thought maybe he was. And like, we talked about this one, didn't we? That was uh Jerry Lewis. Oh, that's right. Um, but on the top of the cover, it says, Kirby says, don't ask, just buy it. <laughs> Because that's the kind of power Kirby wielded back then. <laughs> wow, that is uh, Don Rickles, huh? I'm going to say that was editorial came up with that idea. <laughs> okay, who's this? Oh, it's Jimmy Randall. He sent us Yo, smooches. back up now and get the Jimmy room. Whoa. Recording an MP3 for you to listen to soon. Whoa. And by soon, I mean now. G'day, everybody. <laughs> it Cannot is Jimmy rap. Randall here. He can't uh, With my answer to question of the week. Favorite uh, real life human being, I guess, real person that has appeared in the pages of a comic book. So, um, like 
a lot of other people on this planet. In the last couple of weeks, I've actually uh, signed up for Marvel Unlimited on the app just to get my little fix. And um, I'm just scrolling through, and I came across uh, Deadpool, the Deadpool series from 2012. And Deadpool's always been a little bit meh to me. I, I, I sort of, I, as much as the movies are great and the character's cool, I, I categorise him as like a Harley Quinn because we all the marketing behind the guy, we were kind of told that Deadpool was our new favourite character. We weren't allowed to make up our minds for ourselves. But I did notice that the Deadpool series from 2012 was written by a chap named Brian Posehn, Yay! and he is really, really fucking funny. So I dipped my toes in it, and it's a laugh riot. It's actually really good. And um, especially the first arc with Deadpool having to take down all the, uh, the presidents, the ex-presidents that have come back. But he has a little bit of a help from the uh, ghost of Ben Franklin. And I thought that was pretty funny, Benjamin Franklin just palling around with Deadpool. Um, sure. But they actually characterised him really well. He was very uh, uh, fleshed out <laughs> uh -huh, for a ghost. Okay. And, yeah, All right. I kind of dug it. So that's my answer. I, Benjamin Franklin from the pages of Brian Posehn's and uh, Jerry Duggan's uh, Deadpool from 2012. So that's it. Um, I would also like to really quickly wrap about the announcement I heard today of uh, good old mate Tamura Morrison. Uh, coming into The Mandalorian Season 2 as Boba Fett. I kind of hope that's bullshit. <laughs> like, I don't really want that to happen. I don't know why. Like, it's it's kind of oversaturating Season 2 with a lot of characters. We know Ahsoka's in it. Now we know Boba Fett's in it. So it'll be like, oh, hang on, who's the next guy that I'm going to notice? Just just keep it raw. Keep it keep it separate. But, look, that's just my little nerdy rant. So, um... Yeah, hope you guys are all well. Little update from Australia. We're starting to uh, roll back certain restrictions. Took my little puppy to the dog park for the first time in his life today. What a time. Uh, but, yeah, work is still insane, so I do apologise for the uh, quality and the lack of funniness in this podcast uh, submission. But deal with it. You get it. So that's it. Love you guys. Benjamin Franklin, Deadpool, Tamira Morrison, Boba Fett. Love ya, love ya, love ya. I'm going to go make a grilled cheese sandwich. And that is me, Jimmy, out. Okay, then. <laughs> grilled cheese, that's what does Jimmy. that to him. We found out. <laughs> Gastrointestinal distress is one of the symptoms of COVID-19. It's so true. Get checked out. This shit's for real, man. Don't mess around. <laughs> um, I dig what he says about the Mandalorian, though. I don't want it to get too close to anything you know i like that too telling, referential yeah i like that they're telling a separate story and it's touching on some stuff but that was the best part of it it was just like there's this other thing that's going on and you know well and i'm i'm fine with ashoka being in it because we've never had her as a live action character before i hate ashoka i think that character is stupid it doesn't make any sense and like how, uh, how much of the clone wars have you watched Joe, it doesn't matter how much of the Clone Wars anyone has watched. If Ashoka is the Padawan of freaking, uh, I can't even say his name, of Anakin, Anakin, who was never made a Jedi, how does he have a Padawan? That you are. How does he have a Padawan? I, I, well, I'll man, wait. I'm sure it's <laughs> explained on the show. No, they just gloss right over it. It is not explained. And the character herself is like this mouthy kind of like hip and cool like jedi girl like come on stop it we're gonna get so Ugh. many emails about this i don't care i hate that character Ugh, <laughs> stupid and it, I, I don't need seven a, seasons of that character she turned into something much more than what you're describing i know she did and the clone wars just wasn't for me i i just couldn't dig it i i can't watch a show where people are like oh if you dig through if you slog through the first three seasons it gets really good <laughs> No oh, thanks. <laughs> anyway, back to Boba Fett. Um, I would be fine. You know, Boba Fett is overrated. Totally. Uh, I, I don't care. And But I think it could be cool if they're bringing in Boba Fett and they address the fact that that he is not really a Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean, that would be, I would like to if learn that. If that's part of the story, yes. then I'm into that. I would like to learn that because we don't really know. And we had a bunch of discussions like, well, what are the rules? You know, is Boba Fett this guy or no? And and people are like, well, he's actually not a Mandalorian. He, like, uses it to scare people. So, yeah, show us he's an asshole and the Mandalorians hate him or something. That's pretty interesting. I can get into that. Yeah, I mean, that's canon. That's the current canon is that Boba Fett and Jango Fett were not Mandalorians. Right. But they were also uh, clones, and we don't know if that's canon. So, Well, yeah, it's in the movies, Matt. It's canon. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> yes. Um. 
Yeah, I just I I do agree. I I don't really need the spin-offs to be too cutesy with their connections to the original stuff. Right. And look, and if you want to like if you want to have Ashoka show up in an episode, fine. I don't want her in every episode and being a major character and shit like that. I I like that race of aliens. They look really cool with the head thing. I don't know if it's a horn or hair or what it is. You know, like they're really cool looking. I just don't like the idea of the character and anything Clone Wars makes me just, you know, (laughs) grumpy old man. All right. Final call. Good morning, nerds. David Robbins calling in with your answer to the bonus side question of the week. Um, First of all, hope you guys uh, are all doing well, staying safe. Um, So uh, the bonus question is asked, what do we want to see Taika Waititi do in the Star Wars uh, Playground Um, trilogy, whatever? Um, I want to see Taika be Taika. Uh, I want to see him do whatever project he comes up with um, to to bring his world of flavor to Star Wars. Yeah. Um, John Favreau uh, show ran and gave us Mandalorian um, from his mind, you know, whole cloth coming out of the, out of out of him. Um, I'd like to see Taika play with those toys with that toy box and bring his own Taika spin to it and, and, you know, something like that. Whether it's a trilogy, who knows? Um, I said for a while now, while I love Star Wars, I want to see the camera turn sideways and see something that does not have to do with the Skywalkers. Yes. I'd love to see Force users, but I want to see something else. Um, I'd like them to, I'd like to see them use something that's in the Legends toy box that is not part of canon yet, that they haven't brought in. Um, I know we're probably not going to see Mara Jade or anything like that. That's fine. But let me see some of the bounty hunter stuff. Let me see some of the, the criminal underworld stuff. Let's see some Talon card. Let's see some, you know, some of those, those, you know, underworld characters that we've like shown that haven't gotten a chance to shine in the new Star Wars yet. Anyway, let Taika be Taika. That's, uh, that's what I have to say. Hope you guys are doing a lot. All right. And, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Later. 100. Totally agree. I think the best part, the thing that I enjoyed about like the side movies, not so much solo. I did like solo, but I mean, plot wise where they let things breathe a little bit and we got to see the world a little bit and like just rewatching the last three of the trilogy recently. I just did that on like May the 4th or whatever while I worked the plot, the, it was so breakneck in speed that there was never a moment to be like, oh, that's neat, or oh, that's cool, or oh, I wonder what's going on over there, because it just blew up. It exploded. We gotta get out of here, you know? <laughs> I would like to see Taika Waititi, like, let it breathe a little bit. Do something. Turn the camera to the left and do some. Sure, Force users, by all means. Let's let's learn a little bit about, like, the old Jedi Order or something like that. I'd get down on that, you know? But let it breathe a little bit. Build something, rather than just blowing everything up and and forcing the story along as fast as you can. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I totally love the idea of just exploring the galaxy. Yeah. Like other than what place on those, those three or four planets, uh, like not everybody that's strong in the force becomes a Jedi. Right. We don't even need to mention the word Jedi. No. Yeah. But we could like see or do it or go full on and show us like old school, you know, Jedi, wait, this is how it started or something, or this is where it came from, or this is one other Jedi's story, you know, whatever. I'd be fine with that. So uh, they just announced, they recently announced a, um, the new, what, not an imprint, but the next wave of like Star Wars novelizations. Right. Is going to focus on the, uh, like the pinnacle of the Republic. It's like the high order. Is that what that the is? The high Republic, yeah. I think is what or it's the called. the high Republic. That's right. Which sounds like they're and all like, stoned. Super like, like Irish. Yeah. Man. They're like, hey, hey, they're like, yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> do you have a lightsaber? You'd be a lot cooler if you did. Uh, but yeah, that could be fun exploring that time. Like, I feel like we've gotten a lot though already from other material about like the old Republic and you know, the prequel uh, time frame. 
and even even stuff like that's happening in the side around the original trilogy like right we don't really need to stick in that space no we can no we can think of something else to to focus on like that Ewok police procedural that Dave DeMarco and I wrote where like there's no English and no subtitles and the Ewoks just walk around trying to figure out how Ewoks were killed by stormtroopers, but they've never seen guns and stuff. So they have like yeah. really bad theories. <laughs> it's called, it's called CSI Endor and it is the, uh, and it is the best uh, installment of my dearly departed webcomic good plus that I ever drew. <laughs> we also and had I'll, a, I'll, we also I'll had a slice of life and, and show put it in the post for that just episode. followed Wicked around on days where like he goes fishing for three hours and doesn't catch anything. <laughs> 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 just really nice and mellow kind of Star Wars, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get well, to our thank answers. You guys. Uh, thank you to uh, Brian and Jimmy and Jason and David and... Who are the other two guys? Ah, who cares? <laughs> it's over. Who cares? It's gone. No, thank you to everybody. Seriously. Uh, we love playing along with you guys, and I'm glad we're doing it again. Speaking of which, let's give our answers. All right. Well, I, I'm i struggling to find one that I actually think is <laughs> cool. I found one that I actually love while we were doing this, and I, I can't like, believe I there, forgot. There's one that I totally forgot about, which is uh, – when Bill and Hillary Clinton showed up at Superman's funeral and eulogized him in 1992. Right. <laughs> uh, but I think my favorite one on this list is when Geraldo Rivera. Oh God. Shows up in Count Ducula. <laughs> <laughs> Issue eight of Count Ducula. <laughs> and tells the story of Count Ducula's life on television. Uh, but then the set gets attacked and hijinks ensue. Sure. Uh, and there is like a, it's a photo cover of Geraldo <laughs> hovering over a, a, a much smaller Count Ducula. Okay, it's <laughs> ridiculous. All right then, uh, I am also going to go with Ben Franklin. I believe it was Jimmy that mentioned Ben Franklin. In yeah, uh, yeah, in the pages of Deadpool, but mine is Voodoo Ben Franklin. From Scud the Disposable Assassin. And if you've never read <laughs> Scud the Disposable Assassin, it was an amazing book. Uh, Rob Schrab, who would go on to work on a bunch of different like Comedy Central shows and stuff, he's amazing. And he wrote and drew this book about a disposable assassin. Basically, you want to kill someone, you go to a vending machine, you buy an assassin, you tell them who you want, to, who you want them to kill, they go and kill them, and at the end, they die. They explode themselves, sort of Mission Impossible style, you know? But this robot, Scud, happens to see in the mirror on his back is printed, this unit will self-destruct upon, you know, finishing its mission. His mission was to kill Voodoo Ben Franklin, who is, yes, that Ben Franklin and has been around since <laughs> like, the birth of the nation and has developed an army of zombies and is now running crime because he got disillusioned with the government and uh, the military industrial complex and shit and decided that he's going to be a crime lord and uses super science later on he dies and becomes the lord of hell it's a whole fucking thing <laughs> but uh scud ends up having to keep ben franklin alive so that he does not explode and it oh man it's so clever <laughs> what they go through it's such a wonderful book so voodoo ben franklin that's my answer I think um, I think that Deadpool run is the same run that gave us Thirty Rocks Scott Adsit as an agent of Shield. Yeah, I barely remember this. I know that Brian Posehn was working on it, and like, they and then he later became a member of the Nova Corps. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah, because he was because he was in Jerry. He shows up in Jerry Duggan's Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. My other and, so, and Jerry Duggan co-wrote that Deadpool run with Brian Posehn. Okay. My other choice so, was going to be John Walsh when he showed up in the pages of Outsiders when Judd Winnick was writing it, which was sort of like Teen Titans with some other characters, like Nightwing was running up there. And, uh, no, man, they were the Outsiders. I, but Nightwing wasn't always an outsider. I mean, like, there, what's her head was there, too. Like, uh, Coriander, Starfire is there, and, like, so it was sort of a mixture of the teams, right? You had... Yeah, Metamorpho, who was an outsider. Black Lightning, who was a woman at the time and had... It was like the it, two no, daughters. No, it's not Black Lightning. It's Black Lightning's daughter. Thunder? It was like Thunder or something. 
Thunder recuperates from her fight with Shimmer, and Black Lightning angrily accuses Nightwing of getting her hurt. Oh, I see. Dad showed up because he thought she was injured. Yeah, yeah. He's, but they were, like, looking into angry. a child sex ring, right? They were, like, busting up all the criminals in town, and they found this child sex ring. And they're like, this is horrible. And, like, Judd Winnick dealing with hardcore subjects here, usually... A real person shows up in comics and it's like, oh, the Avengers met David Letterman and it was hilarious, you know. But here they decide we need to shut down this sex ring. Who should we call to do that? The John Walsh, <laughs> the actual John Walsh. And he's going to go on TV and he's on like one of the covers, like his picture. And it's yep. all serious. And I remember an interview with John Walsh, like at the time, I want to say it was like in Wizard or something. And he was like, when Judd Winnick approached me, I realized how important this was. And, da, da. and yes, yes, it's very important. And John Walsh has done this country a service. And that's great. I don't know how important it is to do it in the pages of the fucking outsiders because you're not actually busting any real child sex rings. And we all understand that child sex rings are bad. <laughs> But I will give them huge, like a huge plus for trying to play it totally serious, trying to completely play it straight, you know? I mean, you, you're raising awareness. You're raising awareness. Yes. That's an important thing. And that's a good thing. It's like, yes, if you ask nine out of ten people, is child sex trafficking bad? Of course, they're going to say yes. But how often do you actually think about child sex trafficking? Well, 10 of them will say yes. One of them in their head is like, no way, dude. It's totally cool. <laughs> you know, you're like, you're like, that's the one. You're like, you don't know. You got to watch out for him. That's why you, why you call John Walsh and not Batman, apparently. <laughs> you heard it here first. One out of 10 people is secretly into child sex there trafficking. There you go. There you go. I would just say to the DCU, I might go to Batman before I go to Fox and, you know, <laughs> America's most wanted. <laughs> All right, let's set up our new question of the week for these nerds. All right, this week's question was submitted by Jason Sachs via the THN forums. Recently, I watched Disney's The Black Hole, which was not a good movie. He is so wrong. I can't, Jason, we're going to fight about this because that movie yeah, rules, yeah. okay? Save it for the show. Robert Forrester, oh my God. Save it for the show. But I was kind of thrilled to finally cross it off my to-be-watched list where it, has, where it has been since the movie came out in 1979. What is a book, TV show, movie, or whatever you'd been meaning to uh, take in and then finally did so after years of thinking about it? And what was your reaction to finally experiencing that bit of entertainment? Yeah, did it suck? That's what we want to know. I'm going to have to, man, I'm really have to think about this one. I don't know. I will say I revisited some Bond movies recently, and a couple of them are not as good as I remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> like old school Bond movies, especially the Roger Moore ones, where they're just like, "Oh, they're running around a carnival for forty-five minutes, and he's dressed he's as a clown, and they can't find him." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week to do it. Call us four zero two eight one nine four eight nine four. Shoot us your MP three to two headed nerd at gmail dot com and watch our Twitter and our Facebook for side questions. We're posting side questions. We want to hear from you nerds, so hit us up. Also, we love your questions of the week, so give us questions you want to hear answered on the show. Shoot them to us, and uh, go ahead and record it. Call us and leave it, and we'll play you saying it instead of Joe reading it. It'll be great. All right, we got stuff we got to do. I got to build a grill. It's Saturday. I got a new grill. You got to build a grill. Yeah, I got a new grill. Came in a box. I ordered it off no. Amazon because they didn't have the one I wanted. So, oh man, can't wait. 800 degrees. We're going to some steaks tonight. But right now, to a nerd saying thank you for playing along and signing off.